So uh, has everybody read the minutes? Yes. Uh, yeah. When they March 14th. I make, a, I make a motion to approve the minutes. Yes. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor, mm -hmm. raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Note that did, we, was... did, did you lose a member? Like, yeah, Brian. Like, Brian, Brian, Brian. Yeah. Brian no, that, that I, I think we're all set with just the four of us on that vote. We don't need a unanimous right. to the minutes. So, yes. But I want to call the meeting. Is, is Brian off the the uh, hearing now or where are we here with brian he was just he... having difficulties driving in his truck and he was uh well, we in went and out through of service a bad so... zone okay yeah exactly um well we might as well i mean i, I want to make sure he's available so we have the five members to hear everything yes. um and i it, what i'd like to do is just uh, have somebody at least read the uh, uh the notice and put that into the uh into the record do you have that, Bailey? Do you have the notice um, there, Bailey? I don't have it pulled up. Um, just give me one second. Okay, here's Brian. Brian, we're just uh, uh, getting the having the uh, the notice read into the record. Um, and Bailey's trying to pull that up. You don't have it, Brian, do you? Well, he's in his truck. Uh, I assume yeah, he I'm sorry. It, it, I was calling. I was calling Mark, then it shut me out. Yep. Um, hang on a second. I I can get it. Um, Bailey's Bailey's trying to get it. He's, so. You got it, Bailey? I uh, don't have it. I'm trying. It's my connection's messed up right now. Imagine this wasn't to include all the problems. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna find the. I don't know where she had it. Yep, I am checking everything out. So you, you just need the. The publication, the yeah. The continued pub public hearing. Well, I want to read the uh, the notice of the public hearing. With then it was continued uh, from the original, uh, and then we can announce it was continued at the last hearing because we didn't have five members. All right. Um, so well, I have it where it says case the case and the petition for variance. I have that part. Yeah. Yeah. If you have that, if you could read that, Brian, into the record. Yeah. Yeah. Give me one second here. All right. So this is for case ZV2022-2, a petition for variance under East Lamento zoning bylaws, dimensional and density regulations, table 3-2, for a 5.4 plus or minus feet, foot relief from, from a 20 foot side yard setback at, a, at 20 Cross Meadow Road, Assessor parcel ID 61-53-41 in the residence A zoning district applicant, Giuliano, Giuliano's Pools, 321 Tuckerville Road in Vernon, Connecticut. And it was that it was it was submitted on behalf of I think Jennifer Rochelle. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the other thing I wanted just to make sure was that the uh, publication was done uh, properly in terms of the uh, uh, twice, and then that the, it's been posted for this meeting as well as the uh, last meeting? It was posted for the last meeting. We didn't need a further uh, notice. No, no, I, I'm, no I know that, but they, I'm talking about the open meeting law. Did it get posted in town hall? I know I saw it yeah. on, they, I, I think I saw it earlier today. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So everything got posted. got posted. Okay, yep. okay. So the only other thing I wanted to do was there was a, re uh, a letter uh, from uh, a Thomas Cooper or Coopy and an Ellen Coopy. I'd like to have that also read into the record. Uh, I, I can read it if that's okay. Uh, it's a letter dated 6-2-2022 to East Law Metal Board of Appeals, Ray Cases, ZV-2022-2, members of East Law Metal Zoning Board of Appeals. In regards to this case, which is asking for relief from a 20-foot side yard setback we are the owners of the property located at 26 cross metal road and affected by the sideback we would like to state with that we do not 
object to the petition for the variance. We are assured by the property owner that a stockade fence was to be installed, which from our point of view would make it irrelevant if the pool was 15 or 20 feet from the property line. And it's signed by Thomas L. Coopy and Ellen F. Coopy. And I, for the record, uh, I think that's the property um, that abuts uh, this property. I guess it would be to the South. southeast. Uh, of the of the site where the, the closest neighbor to where the pool is correct um, so uh, we have five members uh, and so what I, I would do is um, we Mark, open up the hearing yeah so I just I'm just gonna give you a heads up before you start so if you if you would do me a favor yep and click on your participants a button down there at the bottom of the screen okay and yep. that opens up a panel on the right hand side yep and then you look under attendees yep and you will see there's one attendee with a hand up already and you see yep and the okay. other attendees are there by name so that okay. as you see who wants to speak that you let me know and i will bring them in okay so um what i what i wanted to do was uh, bring in the, the the you know the rules so please state your name and address for, when you're speaking um we'll listen to the petitioner first who could give their reasons for the variance um they can have as long as they they need to present their petition uh and then uh we'll take any people who are uh, in favor uh, of the petition um who are here and want to speak in favor uh after that we will uh, hear from anybody who is opposed um and uh they have as long as they need for their opposition and then uh, if there's any new subjects brought up by the people who oppose we're going to give the petitioner an opportunity to respond to those uh those concerns uh and then we will uh, close the public hearing uh uh, we may or may not take a vote tonight, uh, depending on uh, what we hear and whether people want to vote tonight or take it under advisement. But one of the things I do want to, uh, given the delay, I'm not sure within the period, I just wanted to verify that um, if we don't meet the uh, time frame for granting the variance, which uh, is required, we just want to make sure that we have the from the petitioner the right um, to extend, uh, you know, so that we can make the decision at, at this hearing. Um, is that okay with the petitioner? If the petitioner, if you could make, yeah, yes. is that okay? Okay. Okay, Good. yes, I'm sorry, yes. Yep. So uh, we'll hear from the petitioner uh, first, uh, if you want to speak, uh, Jennifer. Or if you'd like to let Brian, Julia, well, I mean, or, yeah, whoever, yeah, if Brian wants to go first, uh, the, as the yeah. attendee, yeah. if he wants to speak, no, speak right. first, <laughs> that's fine, yeah. Let the, the person who had his hand up speak first then. So um, would you let that person in, the attendee who had his hand up? We don't have Brian on our list. Uh, sorry, I, I was muted. I'm bringing yep. Brian in now. Okay. okay. And he Thank can you. tell us who NUC is. Yeah. Is Brian Giuliano there? Coming. No, wait a minute. Try him again. Brian, you're muted if you want to speak. He'll have to unmute himself. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. Brian. Thank you. If you want to okay. do a presentation, just give your name and address for the record. My name is Brian Giuliano, 321 Talcott Road, Vernon, Connecticut. Okay. If you want to uh, do a presentation why you believe you're entitled to uh, uh, the side yard setback variance uh, in this particular case. Yeah, well, this one was a tough... It was a tough case because, and I wish we could have done it in person because I had some literature showing what was given to us by the town. 
Um, East Sun Meadow has been a great town to work in over the last 25 years. But every once in a while, I feel that sometimes we don't have the right info from the town. And unfortunately, we don't find that out until it's too late. So in this case, the info, the plot plan that we had showed that we were good. We knew what the setback was. And at the very end of the project or middle of the project, the neighbors started getting involved and, you know, kind of told us, hey, I think the property line is here. It's very common for neighbors to think they have more land than they do. But in this case, this neighbor was spot on. So he knew right where the property line was. We staked it out. We knew we had an issue and the building official got involved and uh, actually met us out on site and kind of said he understood what happened and he, he said we were good. So we, we don't know why it got escalated to the point that it is at now, but here we are and we have the letter from the neighbor. I looked at other alternatives as to like where else that pool could have gone. Um, the back of the house is heavily shaded and you know pretty heavily wooded as far as I'm concerned. And I, I just think with the hill and the way the water moves through that area, uh, being a relatively wet area, that it was an awful place for a pool. So even if I could turn back the clock a year and in hindsight, you know, I, I still would have wanted to put the pool right here. But again, I wouldn't have had a map from the town showing me that I was over that five feet or whatever it is we're over. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the, part of the problem, if, I, if, if I'm wrong, someone can speak up. Um, if this pool had not uh, been put up uh, past the rear line of the house, you could have gone as close as five feet to the line. Yeah, is that, but, is that a, I believe that's accurate. I don't think any of the other board members. No, uh, that's thinking. right, Mark. No. Um, right. And so I think the problem here was that because you you uh, didn't keep keep the pool behind the rear, you know. So in other words, had it been put in a uh, I guess parallel to the street location instead of like. A, perpendicular type the way it is now you might not have had to go as deep into the yard you may have been able to go side to side and keep it the uh, uh the the proper uh 10 or 11, i think it's 10 or 11 feet from the house uh and still meet the requirements uh, of the zoning and you could have been within five feet of the line and we wouldn't have wouldn't have had to be here but you know the the pool's in at this point yeah i mean i i know what you're saying and again if I could go back and, and have a shot at that, I still think it would have been, and I know a tricky installation doesn't make for a hardship by any means. Right, but right. No, no, I understand that. That's why that, that I mean, you know, they, I think that's where the issue comes in, you know, because when I went to the site, clearly the, uh, the northwesterly side of the house is heavily wooded, uh, shaded, uh, and, and you have relatively the same slope. I don't know what the groundwater is, but the, uh, from what I understand, the groundwater is pretty high as you get further back and as you drop, uh, so that if you tried to put a pool in the very rear of the property, uh, it would have been floating in the groundwater. That that was the big thing is the whole drainage aspect of it. You know, throw the whole tree aspect out and the shade and all that, but just the the installation itself, it's just it's not wise to throw those pools down in the water table. It just it leads to issues and. You know, last summer, which was probably the wettest summer of most of our lives, I think taught us, taught me a lot of, you know, a lot about, you know, what the threshold is for these pools. And in some cases, there were pools that had been in the ground for 30, 40 years right in town here that just didn't fare well with all that rain. So keeping it where it is in that position is, is a fabulous spot for it. But I understand it poses a, a zoning challenge. I, right, right, right. No, and I and I don't know how much would have changed had it been, you know, as I said, done, but I can't undo what you did. Put it, if it had been parallel and behind the house, you could have had it right where it is. And I don't think you would have gone, you know, too much further down the hill than you are right now. Well, one of the things that I saw when I was investigating is, you know, I was looking at it too, like, could I have put it back here? You know, you as a business owner, when something like this happens, you know, you want to re you want to evaluate your, your systems, your procedures. And, you know, one of the things, and there isn't a lot of pitch, but they do have a, a footing drain that, you know, that keeps that house dry, that sneaks out that back corner. I use my septic probe and I kind of gently probed into the ground and I was picking up a, a piece of schedule 40 pipe and it just kind of squeaks out right in the back wood line there. And um, it, you know, 
I think that by putting it there, we would have had a, a significant impact on house drainage too, believe it or not. And that's something that a lot of people don't look at until it's too late. You go and you start doing excavation and then you impact a house drain with a pool there. And it's okay if you're on a big slope, you can circumvent the pool with a footing drain of a home. But when you don't have a lot of pitch, like you know, from their basement level, there's not a lot of pitch, you can't, you, you run into an issue with the footing drain of the home. Right. No, no. And I said, yeah, I mean, obviously that, that might be a, an issue with the structure having a footing drain in that area that might uh, add to the hardship issue. But what, what, what does any of this have to do with the case we have now? We, I mean, we can talk all we want and all night long about what could have been done and right. what should have been done. Right now, I got a pool that's not where I think the owner want, you know, intended it to go, which is to conform with zoning. Uh, it doesn't conform with zoning, and they're before us asking us for a variance to correct a construction error based on what I hear is a faulty plan provided by, I guess, the town of East Longmeadow, which to my knowledge is not in the business of providing plans that anybody should rely on for building anything. That's what you hire a surveyor to, to mark out for you. So, so I'm just asking you, Mark, you know, can we advance this a little bit uh, yeah well no that's what i was i was trying to say because we need to find some sort of a hardship and i'm trying to find the hardship why it's located but that, it, Mark, it it's not our yeah. job to find the hardship it's no no that's why i'm asking him what the hardship, the hardship. Right. right that's what i'm asking him to present us with the hardship i got some claiming more... a plan is the hardship because somebody supplied him from the town with a plan, but I, you know, I, I tend to agree with Dan. You don't have a right to rely on an assessor's map. Um, uh, that's why, you know, we normally require that you get a plot plan uh, from a surveyor uh, or an engineer. Or, you know, a plot plan. A plot plan was provided. Right, and but I think this plot plan here shows it. No. But I don't, they, I don't know who provided the original plot plan. Was that an, an engineer that supplied that plan? I was told by Giuliano that the uh, town provided one. Is that accurate? Well, the plot plan was originally su supplied by us. Right. Uh, okay. we and, had did a plot you, plan. and did you supply that to your pool contractor? Yes. And did he put the pool within within the within the confines of that plot plan? To we were told numerous times that the pool was being put within the okay. setback requirements. Okay, so that, that I understand. So, so that's an issue between you and, and and the pool contractor. If the pool contractor is here tonight before us speaking for you, um, yeah, I'm not sure who he's speaking for, you or himself, but. Uh, you know, you've got an issue here that you need to deal with the pool contractor on that we can't help you with. You know, I, I feel terrible for you. I've seen this happen before. I've been a party to things like this myself. I'm a former developer. But, you know, like I said at the last meeting, a variance after the fact for a construction error is something I would never support. And I can't imagine a zoning board doing anything like that. So, you know, I, can I, you guys, can I speak? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as you said, you were a developer before and you've been a part of this stuff and, and so have I. And what towns are going to more and more, and with my 28 years of doing this, um, it, there's been so many issues like this, okay? We went off the plan that, that we were given from the town, but here's the thing. A lot of towns, like the town of Ludlow, in, in Connecticut, they're getting to the point where almost 50% of towns they won't issue a permit until it's it's a stamp survey plan. And they, so they make the clients get an actual topographical A2 survey that not shows the location of the pool, but it shows where all the water is going to go and where the water is going to flow so it doesn't affect any of the neighbors. And when I work in these towns and I go to the clients and explain to them that there's they're going to have an $1,800 charge to have an engineer come out and make these plans, they're all about it because it makes everybody feel more comfortable. I know this isn't the right, you know, form for that. But what I'm saying is, I think to avoid this in the future, the town of East Long Meadow sh should make it that way. And that would stop this because there are a lot of old plans and there are a lot of old prints from the 60s and 70s out there. And it is very difficult to decipher. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, 
I, I'm a commercial developer, so I generally always have to provide that. I've never been allowed to build anything off a plot plan. Uh, but, you know, in residential areas and towns, you know, we try not to burden homeowners with the expensive, you know, expensive surveys. But, you know, th this to me, um, so it sounds to me as though somebody relied on a, on a plan that wasn't right or somebody re relied on, on, on a hearsay from a neighbor that wasn't right. Something wasn't right. But had Smith or some other surveyor that does a lot of work in this town come over and pinned the corners, uh, there'd be no argument. You guys wouldn't be here. That didn't happen. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't see how this board, given its powers and given the zoning law and given Chapter 40A, can give you the relief you want. I, I understand that. But, you know, I went over this, you know, extensively, you know, with our attorney and you know, we hopped on, you know, Google Earth and we started looking at, started scanning East Long Meadow. And, you know, within about an hour's time, you know, he could find a, a handful of pools that didn't conform to the regs. And that was his point. He's like, Brian, and just to your point, this is residential construction. We've got a, a letter of support from the neighbor. We know this happens more than it should. You know, if we want it to stop or if the towns or the homeowners or clients or, or even us pools, if we want it to stop, it, it has to be a formalized product. If, if we're going to go along and build so many pools a year, this is going to happen more. And it, and it has happened. Well, and I understand that, but you know, we're not a legislative body here. We're, we're, we're a judicial body. We're, we're here to make a judgment on facts, not to make new laws. I, you know, I personally agree with everything you're saying. It makes perfect sense. I Probably everybody here agrees with it. But it, it isn't going to help us with what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, I think you so guys are stay on task. So to stay on task, if we take a step back to prior to this, were there options to put this pool in a different spot that would have been satisfactory to topography, drainage, impact on neighbors, impact on the homeowners, financial, um, any of that stuff that um, would have impacted your decision where it is now? Moving it behind the house would have involved substantially more fill because of the water table to bring it up to the grade it needs to be at. Uh, there would have been at least a dozen trees that would have needed to be removed to fit it there between the wood line and the deck as it currently it sits. So there really isn't much room back there to put it behind the house or even 10 feet behind the house. On, right, in but the then you also have a drain. And you also have a drainage and then you pipe that's you run into a drainage back. issue in the house. There's a drainage issue which would adversely affect the house because I don't have enough pitch to to circumvent the pool had it been back there, and that's my main concern. And that, again, after doing this for a lifetime, I've seen that happen a lot. And that footing drain is is paramount to protecting these homes, especially in areas where there's a water table. Right. So what I'm hearing is a, a financial impact to either change the land topography in order to meet and get, exceed the water table. You have a drain curtain that's coming off the back of the house to offset that drainage for the house so it's not getting flooded. Um, other financial costs incurred would have been several thousand or more just to remove trees. Um, so what I'm hearing, is anybody else on the board hearing the same thing or am I missing something? Well, I'm, I'm hearing it. I just, uh, in, in terms of, 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 you know, the location, uh, I'm, you know, I guess I'm still not a hundred percent sure that if you had the five foot setback and you kept it behind the house that you couldn't have put it, uh, in there and not impacted the drain. Cause it's, it wouldn't be, you know, you could have made it closer to the house, uh, and, and kept it behind, uh, the, the rear of the house and still had your 10 feet of separation you know, I, and, and, and if you took the, uh, how far is the house from the sideline, the current house? I don't have that map in front of me. The it's got to be, it's got to be 50, Mark, you know. Well, the side, the, you know, basically the south side of the house, how far right. is that from the, the sideline currently? Uh, 30 feet, 35 feet, 35 Looking feet. Looking at the plan, it says 40. I see okay, 40 so your feet. pool, 
okay, it's it's 40 feet according to the plan. And so if you had five feet, that it would have given you 35 feet if you took it from the five foot setback line uh, and kept it behind the house. Uh, it would have been mostly where the pool is now, except it would have extended uh, a little bit uh, behind the house. Trees it, definitely it would have been further would have, down the slope. Trees and, definitely the would have been had to be removed. And so well, that, that's the like, issue. But the the pool is already down the slope there now. Is what I'm saying. Right, but if you would put it perpendicular to where it is now, lower there, you would have had. But I you could have gone to five days. feet. Well, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. you could have gone within five feet of the property line because yeah, you were right. behind the house. So you could have used it, more of your sideline. If we moved it further back there, like you say, though, and again, I'm not standing there right now. I, you yeah. know, I would say with 85% certainty that if not the pool itself, the grading to hold the pool up at that elevation would have impacted, you know, it, it, I would have had an impact on that drain to that home. And I'll, and it's, it, it was PVC further out, but it's that old, are you guys familiar with that old clay tile pipe? You know what I mean? Like the real old stuff that's, that's like that reddish clay. And I was very concerned about that. That could have been redone, Brian, that, that's the easy fix. You know that. I, I was hoping somebody was going to say, I didn't want to be the one to say yeah. that, but that's, yeah. not, I mean, that, I'm not that's sure a that's enough of a hardship. Neighbors putting yeah. drain. Yeah, you can move a drain anywhere you want. That's not even an issue. Okay. I mean, I just think that you guys are worried about setting a precedent from this. You know what I mean? I, I think that that's the issue, that you don't want to rule on this and all of a sudden set a precedent. So when this comes up in the future, because that comes up a lot at these types of meetings. I mean, it does. But Brian, that's a perfectly acceptable reason for us not to want to do it. It's not just setting a precedent. It, it violates the law. For us, for us to grant a variance after the fact because the pool was put in the wrong spot is, is eminently challengeable by anybody now or in the future. And it would be ridiculous you know, to say otherwise, in my opinion. I'm just one one member but but it's just and i think you know that brian i think you know this this would be there aren't many zoning boards i know that would that would be able to do this i mean in right. other states you can get away with this because a variance doesn't mean the same thing you probably know that in connecticut or in new hampshire is what it means in massachusetts but in massachusetts it's a very strict standard a very strict test that you have to meet and it's by design you've got a conforming lot that, that would then become non-conforming. You know, the people in that neighborhood have a right, you know, to, to have a conforming neighborhood. That's what they bought into. I, if somebody did this, and if I tried to do this in my neighborhood, I imagine my, my neighbors wouldn't like it very much. Even if the pool was by itself innocuous, which I agree that it is, it's not gonna hurt anybody where this pool is. But the problem is that this, I don't think this board can do this. And we're not, a um, you know, we're not a police board. We don't run around and check people's pools. We have no idea whose pools are legal and who's not. I'm sure many illegal pools are built or pools are built improperly all over the place. Our job is merely to rule on a request for relief under the zoning bylaws. We either grant it or we don't. If we don't grant it, if you don't get it and nothing happens and the pool sits there, there's anything the zoning board can do about it, nor is there anything the zoning board would do about it. That's up to other departments in the town if they want to pursue it. And I, and personally, I don't care. It's not nothing I would ever pursue. So if I was your neighbor, but the fact is you're asking the board to grant something that I don't believe it can grant. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, you know, there, if there is a hardship, maybe we could grant it. Um, I'm not sure there is or is not a hardship. I'm not buying the fact that you would have to move a clay pipe as being the hardship. It's just um, one of many reasons. Yeah, no, and I understand. I mean, I don't know how much vegetation had to be cut to put that pool in. I, you know, I, saw, I only saw it after the fact, uh, but I did see, I know, on the other side and in the very rear, it's heavily, heavily treed. Um, I don't know what the condition was before the pool was in and how many trees it took to get removed to put that pool in as it was, because I don't know what the yard looked like before i mean uh maybe jen has pictures or stuff that could show that that you know that was an open area um before 
uh, the pool was put in there that wouldn't require removal of many or just only a few trees um, versus uh, if it had been put in a different location between the expense of the fill, the cutting of the trees, uh, the moving of the drain line, um, maybe all of those might constitute a hardship if you put them all together. But one of the things I don't know is I just don't know what was on the sort of the south side of your house um, and to the east of your house uh, in terms of, well, uh, you know, I, foliage I can, and trees before the, the pool went in. Well, if I can just it, just say, it, 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 are, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, what I say, I'm not, I'm not sure. I just want to say basically what, where Will and I stand as far as where we wanted or were sort of led to believe at the time. We wanted the pool in the backyard initially. We have a fence in the backyard and we have the yard is sort of uh, angled. And Trapezoid. back in the backyard, we have a lot of trees, a lot of trees that we were told would have to be removed. We have a deck and we have bushes and we have a screened in porch. And we were told that th that would have to be taken down in order to fit and be within the, the dimensions, setbacks the setbacks behind, the, behind house. the house. So on that spot, at that time, when we initially met with the construction coordinator, we said, well, we don't want to have the cost or the additional expense of taking down all those trees and taking down our deck. And re we wanted the house, we had that space where the pool is now completely open. Uh, nothing was there. We wanted to utilize that space. Okay. So, so we that... said, okay, we'll put that pool there. We will do it there. That's why we chose it because we felt that it was the most the, the best spot for us to put it in as far as financially and it right because they, they there was a plan excuse me Jen no, go ahead. But there was a plan that was submitted that was dated um, a couple of months before that showed the pool in the sort of in the corner um, it was a March 5th received March 5th 2021 and then it was sup, sup, supplanted by the August 2020 uh 21 plan so there was one plan that was submitted originally showing the pool uh being you know very you know basically in the southeast corner of your lot which was, was conforming mark that was conforming right right well that's what i'm saying that would have conformed uh because of the 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 setback and then that got substituted with one in august 20 of 21 six months later roughly um with the with the plan so uh wasn't it, it, huh? well that's 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 the question we we will and i do have a question and i don't know if it's your the board's uh, ability or maybe it's brian giuliano's ability to answer for this for us was did the town of east long metal building department approve either plan both plans where they are that's what we would like to know if, if these plans were approved by the building inspector, because we were told all along that these pr plans were approved. The plant, the pool was good. We were good. Within we, setbacks. I mean, we were relying on this. People no, no, no. Were... And, and, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to find out because there are two plans. It was one submitted to the building department in March of 2021, which had it in your southeast corner which according to the uh, contractor would have created major problems because you would have had a lot of trees to take down there um and you had a high groundwater table i'm not sure you would have the drain issue there and you would have had to bring in a ton of fill um to keep the pool above the groundwater um and maybe right. that was the reason it got relocated i i don't know but the original one would have complied with the zoning um, well, that's exactly yeah. what the, yeah. the, it is. It, from what we're being told from Brian is that that is that is the biggest hardship right there. With it, even though it looked on paper that it was conforming, right, right, no, and that's what I'm trying to that's what right. I'm trying to get right. to the bottom of yeah. is to find out why it it, it you know because there was a plan because it's like saying hey we couldn't do this from the beginning. Well, no, yeah, you could because you, you gave a plan to the town saying that's where it was going to go. But I think then when you did some research, um, you know, 
checked with the groundwater, checked the well, slopes, I guess the et cetera. Best to, the best and, person to ask that and the best person that should answer is Brian. Brian, well, Juliana, please, if you can please explain that, that yeah. point right there. So I don't have the, the plans in front of me to see what they approved, but I do know that we went off of the map and I know that it frustrates you guys when I bring up that map, but the map showed us that we had room to do what we needed to do. This wasn't something that we said, geez, let's just sneak this in five feet over the line and uh, hope they don't catch it. No, this was something we looked at and we said, okay, we're good to go. This makes total sense. This is way better for our client, a much better spot for the pool. They're going to have a stockade fence around this thing. It fits perfectly. And we're close, but we're within the setbacks. You know, and I don't, it, this has gone on for so long. And it was my construction supervisor. I'm the owner. I take the heat for this. You know, I, that's why I'm here. He's not with us. So I don't want to say things I don't know. But I have been to that house personally many times with that map, you know, pulling my hair out saying, what's the issue? What's the issue? And it wasn't in the neighbor who's a wonderful person finally said, hey, you know, he's like, will you pay for a survey to find the pins? And he goes, and if I'm wrong, he goes, I'll pay. And I said, gladly. So I paid to have the, the survey, you know, the pin, the surveyor yeah. put those the two Smith pins in. Plans, pins on. Yep. Yeah. And and boom, we we found out that we were you know, whatever the, the five Close. feet. Right. And but I mean, I assume you moved somebody in your, your outfit moved the, the original design of the pool from the Southeast corner to where it is now because of the conditions you found at site. I can didn't get approval, Mark. No one got no, approval. No, no I, I understand. But so you did it, but no one took that, that revised plan Right. before you put it in back to the building department. But there is a revised plan that was, because it says received by the building department, whether it was signed off is another issue that was received in August of 2021, six months after the original one. Yeah, I don't know if it was a signed off on or not. I just don't, don't know, have that info tonight. Yeah, I, we, I, know, I, I, I was was oh, we know it wasn't signed off because he came and stopped, so. Right. <laughs> Mark, it sounds like we're, you know, litigating what happened. And that's not our job here. No, no, but I mean, he's, he's, he's alleging Mark, hardship. Mark, 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 I, I don't, I don't have a lot of time this evening. Okay. No, I understand. Is my other point. I don't have a lot of time this evening. I got a family waiting for dinner. Yep. Uh, agreed to have this special meeting. I thought it would be one case. I thought it would start on time and we'd get through it. It's 730. Yep. Uh, if, if this is, if we're, if the conversation is going to keep going like it's going, I don't think we're going to get much done. My suggestion. No, no. And my I, suggestion, I, my suggestion would be, as I often like to suggest to applicants who are in a, in a situation like this one, is that you is that we continue this case, and the applicant consider hiring an attorney or a civil engineer or somebody that believes they can make a cogent case for a variance. Now I'm willing to hear somebody, a professional, come in here and do it, but no one tonight, on your behalf, including yourself has said anything that would persuade me to grant you what you want. And I would love nothing more than for you to have what you want, because I understand this is a problem for you. And I don't mean to belittle your problem whatsoever, but I got a job to do as a zoning official in this town to do the right thing by the town. So I have to do it that way. And I think we all have to do it that way. So that's my suggestion that, that we continue this and you come back, you and, and, and your contractor, huddle, figure out who you're going to bring in. But in my past, I've been on zoning boards for 15 years on both sides as a developer and as a zoning board member. And I think it's the best shot you've got because I'm willing to be open-minded and listen to somebody advance an argument that's convincing. But this one that I'm hearing tonight is not doing it. Yeah, I mean, I've heard some issues that they feel there's a uh, the conditions, the, the soil conditions with the high groundwater, the excess fill that they had to bring, bring in, the fact that the number of trees that would have had to be cut down. Those, those are conditions that might constitute a hardship. I'm not sure they do. Um, that's up to the board members to decide if that's a sufficient hardship or not. Um, so I, I think if you want to proceed on that, obviously, I don't think Dan thinks it is. I don't know what the other members think, uh, that everybody's different. Um, I was just trying to get, uh, you know, the, 
the fact situation is it, it seems to me that the location of the pool, once they got out on the site, changed, um, and they probably should have gone to the building department with the, the second one and got the approval. They didn't, but there still may be a hardship because that's maybe the only location on the lot it can go, given all the conditions um, that and exist I, on that I, lot. Mark, I understand all that. I think the danger, though, we have in exploring all that is, you know, I think the applicants, in fairness to them, they need to be able to deal with their contractor and their contractor, in fairness to himself, needs to be able to deal with these people without us saying a lot of things about what could have or should have happened. The, the only thing that matters to the zoning board, seems to me, is do these people have the, the, the uh, you know, well, that's facts. the issue is, do they have the yeah. facts necessary for us to, to grant right. a variance? And I, think, right. Right. Yeah, I think they've given us some facts tonight um, that might constitute potential hardship that are related to the soil conditions, i.e. the high groundwater and the fact you would have had to bring a lot of fill and the fact that you had a number, a lot of trees that would have had to be cut down in that area. Right. Whether those constitute a, a sufficient hardship, I think that's open to question. And if they want to proceed on that and take a vote, uh, if they get the vote, uh, someone can appeal it. Um, if there's anybody in opposition, if they don't get the vote, they can appeal it uh, saying that there was sufficient hardship and let a court decide it. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the, the, the way we're going to go. I think we're going to have you take a vote tonight um, I, I, I just, honestly, I just want this to be over. I want to move forward. I don't, I, I'll go any avenue I need to go, whatever vote you choose, but I want this, I need to move on. Right. I need to move on. Well, but okay. Jennifer, there's two ways we could do this. You could pull, uh, Mark could pull the board before an official vote and see if you have the votes to get what you want. Uh, uh, that would be that would be one thing you could do. The other thing you could do. I already know what vote. I already know at least one vote. Okay. So well, if well, you so, want to pull the, the panel, go right ahead. Go right. Are ahead there other people in the audience? I yeah. Well, that's why I want to hear the other. I gotta get more other butters that are for there this. Are just butters, want this to be done. There are a butters. There are a butters. Well, I, I do want to hear the one other butters. Most important butter who wrote a letter who is the one affected by this is clearly not opposed to it. We would just like to you know, move on. They would yeah. like to move on. Brian would like, Juliana would like to move on. The more you continue on. this, the more everyone we, has to look at this. Right. No, no. So and I understand. That's why I, I want to, I want to, but I do want to give the other people here a chance to please, speak. Whoever guys. needs to speak, please speak. And then Just once please, they please. speak, then we, and, and if there's fine. anybody in opposition, we can then That's close fine. the public hearing and then, and then decide how we want to proceed. So, uh, Mark, you have that list open. Yeah, I have the list open. So there's two panelists. Uh, there's a person attendee who has a hand up the four. Yeah. I'd like to allow them to speak at one at a time and give their name and address. All right. Is that Don? What is that noise? I, think here? I don't know what that noise is. I think is. that's from Don. Don, can you hear us? I can hear you. The only one that can mute there, himself There's too. some noise coming from somewhere that we can't hear much. There it is. There, okay. there it is. God. <laughs> so, um, who's speaking? We have Tom. Is this the person who has her hand up? Uh, the attendees um, is Jamie uh, Nuke um, or Tom want to speak? It must be. No, that's not. I don't. I don't know. Tom, just unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, Tom. Give yeah, your name I, and address. I got your letter, so I, I think I know what you're going to say. But yeah, my my name is Thomas Coopy, uh, twenty six Crossmore Road. Uh, in town, I, I you know I just want to say that I, I've lived here uh, since this community, this particular neighborhood was built. Uh, everything you're saying about the water table is absolutely true. It used to be uh, classified as wetlands in back of our property, so I'm I'm not sure if, if they could have gone back any further without being actually in wetlands. But I have a pool in my backyard, and I can tell you that I've had liners uh, put in a couple times, and 
the water table is so high that uh, they actually have to bring a water truck in and start throwing water in the, the thing just to put the liner in. Uh, that drain at uh, Brian's talking about, uh, uh, we were here when the house was built. Uh, they had to come back after the house was built and dig through the, uh, uh, the cellar and put that drain in because there was so much water in, in that table. So it, it probably is a, a factor that drain has got to be correct. Um, uh, other than that, I can't see, honestly, uh, any other spot that pool could go. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I wish it would work out, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. just a neighbor. Okay. No, I appreciate your input. Uh, that, that's helpful because uh, that you're verifying uh, at least what the petitioner's saying and the contractor's saying uh, in terms of the high groundwater table and the drain. Uh, and I, I'm also told that there would have to be a lot of, uh, to get above the groundwater, a lot of fill, which makes sense. Uh, I don't know about the trees. Was that area to the rear heavily wooded before this? Uh... It was, it was uh, uh, heavily wooded uh, till about 10 years ago and a neighbor came in and took out all the trees and, uh, and kind of made that, uh, that area uh, treeless and uh, usable land. Uh, Okay. Uh, up until then, it was uh, it was pretty wooded. Okay. So, because the, the the far back looks still to be pretty wooded where they originally were going to put the uh, the pool, but up where you know I couldn't tell you what was there before because what's there is the pool now and the you know the decking for the pool or the patio. There was nothing. Nothing. Yeah. 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 So I, that's I, what I, that's what they've said, and I think you're confirming that, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, um, you know, I. I I do remember uh, maps years ago that uh, my pool is probably 30 or 40 feet from a, a, a wetland yep. uh, and the wetland started in the yard next door. So uh, I'm, I really don't think it could have gone back further. Okay. No, I appreciate your, your input. Uh, are you all set, Tom? Yes, I'm all set. More to say? Okay. Does anybody else want to speak either Jamie or, uh, Nuke. So, Mark, I apologize for the audio issue before, too. Uh, Nuke, I have promoted numerous times. Nothing happens. So, yep. I don't really know what that issue is. Um, okay. So, how about Jamie Herrick? I, if Jamie wants to speak, I, I can bring him in. Or yeah, her, if he wants to hear her, she, I don't know if it's a male or female. It's a male. Male, okay. <laughs> Jamie, does Jamie want to speak? So, uh, I'm not, I am getting no, the other person, that nuke person that came in is our human resource officer who just tried to get in when I felt I wasn't getting in. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just, so that he's not going to speak one way or the other then. It, they were just trying to like help. I don't know what the issue was, but I just had a hard time hearing you getting guys. It in. In. Okay. So in, in the, but Jamie is, uh, we can't get him in or he I doesn't can't, wish I to speak. I can't get him in. I, honestly, I keep hitting promote to panelist and nothing is happening. So I think that's frankly on my, uh, my end of uh, zoom administration because that's never happened, but you know, he is texting me and you know, if I can look at his message here, it, you know, he, he's basically saying that, you know, our site superintendent, Eric Levesque, you know, had, and again, his word, I, I don't, I know you don't like this, had somebody come out from the town and they told him it was good to go in that place. I do know that meeting took place and obviously if this gets ex escalated to the next level, which I personally don't feel is necessary, that's where it's going to go. And I think it's going to become muddied and it's just going to be an unnecessary waste of everybody's dollars and the town's going to yeah, get dragged. I mean, yeah. I, and I don't know what authority and who he spoke to. And typically you get, you know, a written approval, not just a quote, okay. Uh, you know, in most cases, but. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, if you're building a shopping center or something like that, but again, it's, you know, and what we were doing and, you know, based on my, you know, almost 30 years of doing this every day, 
you know, it, this stuff happens. I mean, this was an error. I mean, there's, yeah, there's no, no, no. I know, I know there is, and and it and and it, that isn't the hardship because you had a town official put something on that they made a well, mistake. I'm not sure we, that because that's not the type of hardship the zoning recognizes uh, that we're talking about. It has to be related to the size, shape, topography you know, and, and the conditions of the soil, which you've talked about, uh, the yeah. fact that somebody made an error, that doesn't one of the hardships that we can base yeah, our decision on. We went over the hardships. You know, this right. was well, just that's what I'm saying. I, I, and that's all I've just wanted to do was to hear from somebody if the person had something else to add in terms of uh, either confirming the hardships that, that everybody has said, or uh, if they have other hardships or they're in opposition. I just want to make sure any whoever is here that wants to speak can speak. So we have a, a full thing. And then uh, so far, I haven't heard anything new other than what's been presented. Um, and if we can't get Jamie in, um, I'm assuming that he doesn't want to speak, but, um, but he, I, he's on, if Jamie, he's out there now, if he can just unmute himself, uh, and let us know what he has to say, uh, um, I think we will now have heard from everybody. I, I think Jamie is actually not there. Okay. Cause he's on mute. Yeah. But I, I think the he reason you're not away. getting a response is if Jamie were following what was happening, I think. Jamie would respond. Yeah. I mean, Jamie's got young kids. I'm sure he's getting them ready yeah. to bed. The computer's on and he's in the other room or something. So, okay. So, um, so we made the attempts to get him. Is there anybody else like this? 860, I assume, is you, Brian? The 860 the is me. Yeah. yeah. I assume that's you. So, I, I think we've heard from everybody but Jamie. Uh, we've made a, a good faith attempt to get Jamie to speak. And I guess. Uh, you know, I can't force someone to speak. Um, and uh, does anybody have anything further to say? Otherwise, I'll, I'll uh, take a motion to close the public hearing. Does anybody have any other reasons why the pool? So if we could to say that the pool can't be where it is today, is there anywhere else on the land that it could be? No. No. <laughs> There's nowhere that I could put it on the land and be able to guarantee their product. You know, like the neighbor talked about with the liner and whatnot. You know, I have I guarantee all these things. And by moving it back or this and that, I cannot guarantee that product in that water table. Where it is now, I can guarantee their product. But we were told originally that it was a mistake. That now we're being told this is the only place you can put it. I mean, you know, it's after I, I, I want very I want very much to find relief for this applicant, but the, you know, the, doing it walking do backwards doesn't seem to work. I'm I'm not saying what you're misconstruing what I'm saying. When we say it's a mistake, we're looking at what Smith found out later, which is not required by the town of East Lime Meadow for anybody to get a licensed surveyor to show the pins. They take our drawings for it at face value. And the map that I have showed that it was okay to put the pool there combined with all the hardships which i know everybody doesn't want me to go through again but given all those factors and the fact that i had a map showing that i had the room to put the pool there led us to put the pool there and to be able to guarantee it and it's a you know it, it can't go in the back it i couldn't guarantee it and yes if this gets escalated we could definitely get an engineer to to put a stamp and write a letter saying why it can't go back there I just don't think that's necessary. No, I understand. I can just, someone I, just describe the stockade fence to me that the neighbor wants on the side? Can someone describe what it is, the height? What there's going to be a white stockade fence where the where the um, pool is now. It's at the end of our driveway for privacy for both our for us and for our neighbor. The stockade white fence is going to be in the front of the house and then down the side of our neighbors in an L shaped. That's the stockade fence. It's going to be white, and it's it it definitely um, is something that you know. How high will it be? Yeah. How Originally. tall is it? Right. How tall is the fence? I, I have to go back and I had um, I had the fence already <laughs> picked out with the fencing our fencing company. I I don't know. I have to look what it's going to yeah, be. I would Brian, say Juliana, I don't know if you know what it is. It would be seventy-two inches, six feet. Yeah. Jen. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to check. So it's a seventy, and I assume if it's a white one, it is it going to be a, a wooden fence or is it going to be vinyl? It's going to be vinyl, I believe. Vinyl. Okay. It's going to be um, it's going to be um, just yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're okay. Right. That, that's fine. 
I just wanted to just to make sure so we that we had all the facts. Um, so, uh, does anybody else want to speak? Uh, just speak now, forever hold your peace. Well, I, I do. I, no. I, I just I, I do agree with Brian Giuliano in terms of the whole idea of this whole saying a mistake is being sort of misconstrued. So I just want to make sure that the entire board understands that you know it, it, it's something that. I believe that there are enough hardships aside from this using, the, you know, saying mistake. No, yeah. I don't believe that that should be the uh, where we look at this or where we focus our attention to. No, that that's fine, and that's why I think we'll leave it up to the board once we close the public hearing to decide whether or not they feel you've met the requirement. I think you know the public good. I don't have a problem with because there's nobody in opposition. I think it's going to improve the the neighborhood, um, and it won't uh, derogate. I think it leave enough room and privacy uh, so that people can get around. It's the hardship issue, and that's the issue is whether or not the panelists on the board feel you met the requirements of the hardship under the law or you haven't if you have then you're going to get the variance and if you if you haven't you're not going to get the variance i mean that's really what it's going to come down to so uh hearing nobody uh, I, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing we have a motion from any of the board members to close the public hearing i second i i i give you the answer to that. the mo you move and any yeah. anybody second that second Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. So the uh, public hear hearing is closed and now we'll just do deliberations of the board members. Um, and uh, before we take a vote, um, you know, what you're feeling, Francis, in terms of the, the hardships. I know it's, it's a mixed bag here. Uh, they do have some hardships. I just don't know if it's enough for us to vote on. I That's think the poll could be done without that much of an issue in the right place if it was done correctly in the beginning. Right. Okay. Brian, what your feelings? I, I'm in the same boat as um, Fran. I, you know, see some hardships, but you know, I don't know how um, concrete they are. Jim. Yeah. I mean, Brian Giuliano said that he could have an engineer produce the letter, right? Obviously, if uh, if we had that, it would be a lot easier. But right. at this point, we don't have anything against it. And I got to be honest with you, the most compelling <laughs> participant to me is this Mr. Kopi or Tom Kopi, the, yep. the, yep. the resident. I mean, he's been he gave me more reasons and more compelling um, yeah. arguments mm -hmm. than I think anybody else did. And, and he has no yep. you know horse in the race, really. So yep. I, I think I based, based on the information he provided and his his testimony certainly uh, establishes what, what I think needed to be established. Yeah. So I guess what I would do is I would entertain at this point, a motion from one of the board members, either to either deny the variance or approve the variance with conditions. And then we'll take a vote on it. Do we have a motion by anybody to approve the variance? Do we have a motion by anybody to deny the variance? Yeah, I think we, at what we have for right now, I think we have to deny it. Okay, and so you, you don't move we, to deny the variance and based on the fact that you don't feel the hardships that have been presented uh, are sufficient to uh, support the uh, the petition. Correct. Okay. Right. Okay, Mark, Mark, yes. Mark can, can, let, let me... I'm going to make the same suggestion again, and I'm going to hope that um, that the applicant um, pays attention again and, and, and considers it again. If, if we take this vote, you're, you're not going to get it. You're going to have an illegal pool, and I don't think you can come back again for how long. What's the statutory limit? This is a two-year petition. Okay, so for two years, you know, you got to sit there with an illegal pool and battle it out with your contractor or the town, whoever you want to battle it out with, and nobody wins. So, and and I'm well, they could appeal it. No, let, let me just get this. Say this. So, my suggestion again to you, Jennifer, uh, is that you continue. Don't let the board vote tonight because it's going to be no. Continue the case. If if my compatriots here agree to this, this is just my idea. Continue, continue the case. You won't have to pay another fee. Get an attorney. 
who deals with cases like this. There's plenty of them in the area. I'm not allowed to make a suggestion. Maybe Brian knows somebody. Okay. Get a civil engineer. Well, maybe a groundwater report. Come before us with some facts by experts. And let's take another whack at it. That's my suggestion. Otherwise, this if, if a motion passes, my vote is going to be against it. Right. I mean, it, it, so your option is if we vote no, you, your only option would be uh, to file an appeal that while the appeal's pending, they can't force you to take. I, the, I'm uh, doing my best, up. best yep. I can to help you guys. The best thing I can do to help you guys. I don't believe so, that. So. <clears throat> but that's up to so, them. I, I don't know that they want to do that I, or not. Yeah. Can I just clarify one thing? Um, yep. Would the applicant not be the one to vote on or to um, ask for a continuance? Because Brian is the applicant. Juliana's pool is... Right, the, the applicant and, and the owner would have to both agree to it because it's a, it's a really joint. He's at, I, I, because he's not the, right. the landowner. He's at, acting on behalf of the landowner. Whatever, Wh whoever, whatever. Yep. Doesn't matter. I'm just I, trying to clarify. I just want to make sure that we have it right, so... You know, as long as my client you know, is supportive of that, I know they're very disappointed with the whole process, and I just want to sew this up for them to the best of my ability. But I have no problem as the applicant going out there, bringing an engineer in and, and coming in with some real good hard facts and some lingo that you might like better than us just telling uh, well, you. Brian, I'm not interested in lingo. I'm interested in facts, okay? Just get some facts. Well, this is not a ceremony. You know, I'm trying to do this with a straight face. If, if I'm going to grant, if I'm going to be party to a variance granted for a construction error, then I want, I want it to be wholesome. I want it to be able to defend it later. I want this board to be able to defend itself later when other cases like this come up that are perhaps much more complicated and, and onerous than this one is. And these people deserve a fair shake. They bargain for a legal swimming pool. They don't have it. So that's, you know, I'm not looking yeah. for a lingo. So, Jen, and I don't know what you want to do, whether you want to put it up for the vote tonight and take your chances and probably have to file an appeal or well, I, uh, continue I already, it and, and see if you can get a, an engineer and attorney. To... Is going to be. I already get the sense of what the vote is going to be. It's very clear. So, Brian, Juliano, if you're going to hire someone and you're going to take care of that legal end and get an attorney or get your civil engineer and present your facts, please do so. I'm because happy to do Because at the end of the day, we would like to know where we stand, whether we're gonna be able to open this pool or whether we're gonna to have to, what we're gonna to have to do. So please, by all means, Brian, if you're able to do that to satisfy this board, please do it. Yeah, I'm happy Are you to able do to do that, Brian? What time frame would you need for that? Well, it's tough because those people that do that type of work seem to be harder to come by these days. I just know that from a lot of, you know, commercial projects we have going on in various states, but um, I would imagine. Yeah, as much time as you want. There, there's no, 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 we're not. I'm just, I'm just saying, what do you need for time? Well, I mean, you know, my, my hunch is it would take somebody six from what I'm seeing in this market. It would take somebody sixty days to get out there. If it was in Connecticut, it would be a lot easier for me because I have my own cousin owns a, an engineering and a surveying firm. And um, so it's great, but over the border in Massachusetts, we'd have to, I'd have to go with somebody fresh and um, I'm, I'm happy to find somebody, but by the time I find somebody and they, they get out there and I meet them and they write a report and show these hardships, I would imagine it would be a 60 day deal. So well, do you want I, to continue I don't, it I don't see why that is a 75 problem. 75 days? It's not a problem for us. We, we, it doesn't matter. I think the board as much time as you need. And I don't know why you can't open your pool. Nobody's going to tell you you can't. I mean, if unless the building Nobody department says you might because it's not finished. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Oh, well, that, that I can't help. But I, I'm just saying, you know, that nobody's going to come and order you to take your pool out, to my knowledge. You just, our well, job. While it's pending, they won't. Well, whatever. I mean, our job is just to try to make it legal for you if we can. So, yeah. Uh, I, I would make a motion, yes. Mark, if this is appropriate, that this uh, that this case be continued for uh, up to sixty days, uh, so that the. Well, you need more than that, Brian, because you, know, you were saying you might days. not get that. So I would say seventy-five or ninety days. 90 give them ninety days. days. Give them, I'll yeah. make the motion. Not give them ninety days 
Let's yeah. put a specific date and time so we don't have to republish. Right. To to furnish plans and and uh, present testimony uh, from their experts. I and mean, I'm telling them who they have to use. I'm just suggesting that a civil engineer and, or, and or an attorney would be good. But whoever you want to use that can prevent, you know, present a, a good argument for us. Because I, I think you see that everybody here is predisposed to help you. But we got to do it and have, have it be done right. Yeah, Brian, I think it's just you, you basically have to try to have an engineer being able to give us the evidence to show that this is pretty much the only position that that pool could have gone on the site with all the other uh, physical hardships. So that mo that motion is made. Federal. Does anybody want to second my motion? I, I'll second it, Dan. I want to put a date on that specifically, though, if we can. Um, and so, Bailey, I wanted to look at um, that would put us toward the end of September. Right, right. Now, we, have exactly. a, we have a meeting date on, I mean, the next meeting date would be September 12th. There's oh, not fine. a meeting date in October. Could we meet in, in, in early October or yeah, have a special meeting? Yeah, let's make it our in, meeting uh, date for October, Mark. That's all. Whatever yeah. our date is in October. What's our, what's our October it's our date? Second, it's our second, second Monday of October. Yeah. Is that, but that's a holiday, right? Is that the 12th? Um, So then we just go to the next. It Monday. is a holiday, yeah. So but we just go to the third that, Monday that month, Mark. Is that okay with everybody? A third Monday in October. Yep. Okay with me. So that, is that would okay be with uh, Brian 17th. and uh, Yep. Okay. It's okay. So we'll be the third Monday in October at six thirty p.m. It may be. I don't know whether we'll be able to Zoom then or not because with the COVID stuff, it may be in person. Well, let's just um, let, let's just our regular the date motion, we'll do with the library. Mark, let's just yep. get the motion passed first with that date in it, and then we'll yep. then you yep. can yep. do that other stuff. Yep. Okay. I second that. Motion. Okay. All uh, all in all favor, favor, raise your hand. Aye. I'll note, uh, Brian. I can't see you, so I don't know. Just say yay or nay, Brian. Yep, I'm back. Yep. Okay, he's back. So hey, all are yeah, in favor back. of it. Um, so it's it's continued to the third Monday in. Uh, October, um, at which time, uh, or between now and then, uh, there'll be some uh, submittals by en civil engineers uh, and or other whoever whoever they decide to get or attorneys whoever they get, nice. um, and then we'll have the hearing uh, on that day. We'll continue the hearing. Um, I'm gonna re I'm gonna also do a motion to reopen the hearing because we close the hearing. Yeah. Okay, Mark. Okay, I'll I, I, entertain a motion to uh, reopen the hearing. Yes, reopen the hearing. And uh, anybody second. second that? Second. second. All, all in favor, raise your hands. Aye. So Aye. that's unanimous, so that the public hearing is going to remain open so that uh, additional uh, documentation can be submitted. Uh, it won't have to be published and sent out to all the neighbors because they were uh, on notice. But I would suggest in any event, Bailey, that we do at least send out a regular mail notice to the neighbors, even though I'm not required. I wouldn't do the publication, um, but we need to post it for the open meeting law. And it would be at 6.30 p.m. Uh, I don't know if we can do it on the library. Um, uh, usually you, you got to give a time and place to, when you do the yeah. continuance. So uh, I so, would say it would be either the meeting room in the uh, uh, town hall or in the, if it's available, can, I assume this far out, it would be. We can, I mean, if you want to give a time and place, you can also just say via Zoom at this point, because it's going to be hybrid regardless. Or it Is it be. still going to be a, well, that's the issue. We, I didn't know what the law would be. You know, right now I know it's good through the end of, of August. I don't know what's yeah, going to be after August, whether we're still true. going to be able to do zoom meetings or not. I'm hoping yeah, we're I mean, able to, without, if they don't, you know, they, without, I, I, I don't have the ability to say what rooms are available right now because everyone's closed. So I wouldn't be able to ask. Okay. But it'll now, be at before you do your filing, you can do it. Bailey, is what we're saying. Right. So, All right. so, so can we, well, can we just and move we'll give notice to every the parties, you know, Ju the Julianos and the Rochelles, right. uh, right. telling them. But I would also give it to the people uh, within 300 feet when we pick the the place uh, where it's going to be, and it'll be on the posting as well. Yeah. So. All right, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I certainly need to go. I second that. I certainly need to go. Okay. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, thank you for appearing. I 
apologize for the the long delay and I apologize for me holding everybody up for the first 15 minutes um to get back down here so that's all right listen all right. Oh, we all make mistakes I gotta get dinner on yeah okay guys all right, all right. thanks all right. guys all right, okay. thanks a lot Brian okay yeah